uh, take another step and think about if I am worried about my brain health and if I want to know a little bit more about how my brain health is doing, I can think about maybe getting a medical checkup. Uh, Dr. Beck, what can we currently do for uh, brain health? Medical Unfortunately, checkup? nothing. You can just fill up, you know, questionnaire to the paper. That's it. So that's not very good news. But what if we could look at what goes inside the brain directly? What would the future of brain health look like if we can directly see inside the brain? Today, I'd like to discuss AI and the future of brain health with you. Brain disorders pose more challenge to our society than ever before for reasons including COVID-19. Of course, there are increases in neurodegenerative dis disorders, including Alzheimer's disease, where aging population contributes to that, where not only do we have a lot of patient population with Alzheimer's disease, but it is expected to grow quite dramatically. On the other hand, diseases such as Alzheimer's, a neurodevelopmental disease that affect children, uh, something that was one in 10,000 patient population in 1970 is now uh, reaching the numbers of 1 in 36. In addition, with COVID-19, social isolation is also bring, bringing about a lot of problems, including mental health, which is difficult to quantify and affects almost all of us at this stage. In addition, another bad news is that COVID-19 is now starting to show that it is causing brain damage uh, for many of the patients who have had COVID-19. Therefore, the task of trying to address this brain disorder is one of great urgency and a growing one every day. So, before we discuss solutions, let's take a step back and think about what can we possibly do right now at this very moment to manage brain health? And to help answer that question, I would first like to introduce Dr. Jae Hong Lee, who is a renowned neurologist with Alzheimer's disease and related dementia expertise. So let's ask Dr. Lee, what can we do to manage brain health at this point? To answer the question, what I can do to protect brain health, all you can do is to maintain physical and mental activities and to uh, eat well and sleep well, and plus to interact with people. That's about it. So I guess the summary is we can do everything that's generally good for our health, but not, not so much specifically. Then let's think about, uh, take another step and think about if I am worried about my brain health and if I want to know a little bit more about how my brain health is doing, I can think about maybe getting a medical checkup. Uh, Dr. Beck, what can we currently do for uh, brain health medical Unfortunately, checkup? nothing. You can just <laughs> fill up, you know, questionnaire to the paper. That's it. So that's not very good news, but currently, as we've just heard, there's not that much we can do to maintain our brain health other than just trying to be generally healthy and there's no way to check for our brain health. What if we start to see serious symptoms? What can we do then, Dr. Lee? Uh, to be honest, there, there's not much we can do for them at this stage other than providing the symptomatic medications or uh, cognitive stimulation. Do you think the future technology like yours can change the landscape? Let's find out. <laughs> so on the topic of AI, this AI is a very hot topic for a lot of us, but let's take a step back and also think about what can AI do at this point for our brain health. If we take a step back and think about AI's role in many of the technology development, AI, while fascinating and doing a lot of really cool things, AI ultimately at this very moment can only do what humans can already do in a much more efficient way. And so given our state of knowledge of the brain, it is unlikely that, that AI by itself can do anything. But what if we could look at what goes inside the brain directly? What would the future of brain health look like if we can directly see inside the brain? What we can't see, it's very hard to do anything about, but once we can start seeing what happens, it is a completely different story. So with a technology like Neuromatch, where we can start to see what goes inside the brain, let's imagine what the future would look like. What we can do, of course, is to directly check for your brain health status. Instead of relying on information like, I think my memory is okay, I filled out the questionnaire and it's doing okay, we can directly look at your brain and see if your brain is in good health. 
Furthermore, if you are suspected to have brain disorder, we can specifically diagnose what your brain is doing in terms of uh, the symptom causing brain function uh, problems. And then once you know what exactly is going on inside your brain, you can also imagine personalized treatment to directly recover the function that is not working properly. And furthermore, if there is no treatment that is available to match to your brain status, uh, we can then develop novel personalized treatments to directly recover the brain function that was lost. So what do we need to do in order to directly look inside the brain? We need to know how the brain works. Without knowing how the brain works, it's impossible to address this problem. And Another way to pose this problem is to say, can we build an engineering platform for the brain? Engineering fundamentally requires you to know exactly what the goal is and quantify it. And due to the advent of more systematic technology in biology, such as genetics, one of the ways that people really tried hard to understand brain disorders with is genetics. You try to sequence a lot of different things and relate to brain. Another approach has been to look at a lot of molecular cellular biology markers, uh, try and get rid of plaques and see if that solves the brain disorders. But ultimately, the goal of brain disease treatment is to recover your neural circuit function, where your brain has to function normally within the normal circuit function range, where all the other things are variables and your goal is to restore brain circuit function. Then. To quantitatively define our goal of restoring brain circuit function, we need to know how the brain controls behavior. And traditionally, this has been a very important topic in the neuroscience community, and what we try to do to understand the brain circuit function is to look at a behavior like running and record from a neural, a neural cell inside your brain to see if a certain cell relates to your running. That cell fires every time you run. That's a very important information. With the advent of imaging technology in the 90s, we looked at how different brain regions related to behavior. And with more recent technology, we're starting to look at how the brain is wired and how does that relate to behavior. However, while these provide important clues, ultimately, in order to understand how the brain works, we need to use these clues to define a circuit algorithm where we know who talks to whom inside the brain in order to generate the behavior that you're interested in. When you know who talks to whom, when that communication is not working properly, your goal is to simply restore that communication. And so in order to do that, we started this with uh, this, uh, the development of genetic technology combined with imaging in order to get specific cells and their relationship with the whole brain function. And with over a decade of effort trying to do this, we are now able to reconstruct circuits like this. This is a cell type specific whole brain circuit algorithm uh, that has been quantified through modeling from OFMRI measurements. And here you're seeing two different very important pathways, direct and indirect pathways that are implicated in things like Parkinson's disease, autism, addiction, you name it, a lot of different uh, disorders. And we now know how brain regions in different groups talk to each other. But we couldn't stop there. Once we knew how overall the brain is talking to each other, we then use that information to figure out how individual neurons are communicating with each other. So now we are able to simulate how uh, the brain communicates at a single le cell level. And once we have this information, imagine things like neuromodulation therapy. It has many different names like digital therapy, electroceuticals, which is now used to treat patients in various cases, but these are done in an anecdotal basis. You put an electrode, you try uh, an experiment, uh, which costs hundreds of millions of dollars, and then at the end of it, uh, it didn't work, or maybe it looks like it works. And so it hasn't been done in an engineering fashion. But now, with the kind of technology we have to be able to model things at a single cell level, we can correctly predict how intervening at specific circuit nodes can reverse disease symptoms. This is an example of our work where we show that we correctly predict. This is work uh, that has independently been validated where you look at modulating different circuit elements to see which ones can reverse the Parkinson's related synchrony and as you can see here, with a simulation that takes less than five minutes, we can tell exactly that GPI is the one that coordinates a lot of these synchrony. 
Furthermore, for more long-term treatments like stroke recovery, we now see that uh, the circuit, like the motor cortex and thalamic interaction in this particular case, is what leads to um, neuromodulation-based rapid stroke recovery. This is another example where we show exactly how the brain dynamics works throughout the brain to maintain seizure synchrony in this particular case, which is implicated in epilepsy. And you can see that certain activity remains in certain parts of the brain, and it starts to move very slowly uh, within the hippocampus and engages larger parts of the brain later, which is not something you can ever imagine without directly observing it. Furthermore, now that we have a very good understanding of the circuit dynamics, what we wanted to do was to understand how it relates to markets, markers like protein aggregation that we often see in neurodegenerative diseases. One of the things that has been noted in recent years, not too long ago, uh, first publication in 2013, that shows that Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, ALS, they all have these spreading pattern that has been seen in things like uh, mad cow disease. Uh, in prions, where we call it prion-like spreading. And while this has been observed and also validated in animal models, it wasn't clear how these spreading mechanisms occur. And using novel 3D brain clearing technologies that has just become available, uh, we've mapped how these spreading occurs throughout the brain for over 18 months. And using these information, we also convert them to Allen coordinate space and figure out how different genes relate to these spreading patterns. Our ultimate goal was to relate these different pathology to how it relates to brain activity. And here, we found something quite amazing. Neural function changes not only changes its function, but also pathology. In other words, if you restore brain function, it also removes the pathology potentially that has uh, happened inside the brain. And here, the red color is areas where neuromodulation has removed pathology alpha-synuclein in this case. And so utilizing a lot of these knowledge that we have now, we can start to transform brain health care with the help of AI as well. And so brain therapy development can, development can now move from treasure hunting models to system engineering approaches, where we don't have to climb various mountains and find out, oh, this one's not quite it. We can now design, find the mountain that we need to climb, design and execute how we need to uh, climb that mountain. So the Neuro Elvis Neuromatch technology platform looks like this. A doctor, for now. Uh, we also intend to engage individual um, patients and normal individuals to this where you can start to maintain your own brain health. Where individual patients' brain function data is uploaded to the Elvis web interface. It's a fully web platform. And you can, once this information is uploaded, you can do personalized brain function diagnosis, personalized treatment selection, personalized therapy development, and this information is relayed back to the doctor to enable accurate diagnosis and treatment recommendation. Right now, if you go to the clinic, this is what it looks like. For something like an EEG reading, a doctor looks at the screen and manually tries to identify events that seem not normal and uh, manually process this information. And this manual process, when you have really long uh, recordings, it could take like one, three, one to three hours per patient, which really burdens the doctors, and also it's a very challenging task. AI, as I mentioned, is something that can help us do things that are tedious, while we know how to do this for the most part very well. And for things like spike and seizure detection, which are events that we want to detect with uh, with this doctor's effort, we can do much better with AI. Here. AI allows automatic detection and classification. In this case, you can see there's like 76 seizures. Imagine a doctor marking all 76 of them. It's a very difficult challenge. But AI can automate all of this. And on top of that, we can do automatic calculation of network characteristics, which is impossible to do in a doctor's head. And these are all based on information we learned about from our neuroscience research. And for something like seizure dynamics, uh, before you would have done it where you sampled a few to get an idea of what it does, but we can now do this where the whole 76 seizure dynamics are summarized. And also we can do analysis to look at different quantitative parameters uh, that have been identified 
uh, where you can get nice 2D summaries and also look at different parameter relationships that you couldn't look at before. And you can also look at individual events of activity related to your disease and have video reconstructions to see, oh, that's the event that's going on uh, when uh, the disease is occurring. And you can look at different flow analysis to get critical information for how to design treatment. So what all of this sums up to is that instead of doing a health questionnaire, where like, uh, do you know what, what date it is today to identify what your brain's problem is, imagine having a future where you can directly look inside the brain to maintain your brain health. Brain health with Neuromatch will allow us to transform the space of how we manage brain health, and we expect to provide the solution to the clinic in 2022 and 2023.